Hi. If you're like me, you're here because you are about to take the Part 107 test in the summer of 2021 or after. And uh, much like me, you probably have gone online, looked at a ton of the popular prep videos, and maybe are trying to, like me, take the test without any uh, extra money being spent, um, just prepping with online materials. So yesterday, I took the test and I passed it, but I passed uh, with a lower percentage than I thought. I got an 83%. It means I got 50 out of 60 questions. Great. But I have to tell you, the test was different than I expected. And I want to save you some of the same heartache, if I can, uh, with some general advice. So at the end of the test, they printed out this uh, form and they give the codes for the things that I got wrong. So I'll tell you this, um, let me shrink down and I'll show you a bit of my process here. So uh, I of course went to the Tony Northrup video and watched that and the better B-roll video. And then I took a bunch of the practice tests and I was nailing those. I felt like I learned that material so well, the METARs and the supplementary maps and all of that stuff I felt like I had a very good handle on. I was nailing the questions, uh, flashcards. Um, I didn't put a ton of time into studying for this, uh, a few days worth, uh, a few hours a day, just um, learning the basics and then uh, doing well. And then just before I took the test, I ran into this guy's video and uh, he said, not what I studied and watched on YouTube. This guy was a little bummed out, but he also passed, same as me. And I, I will confirm his experience. Um, a lot of the questions were different than the questions on the practice tests. And I, I believe they've changed the test pretty significantly, both what they ask and the way they ask it. And it was, was harder than I thought. I also ran into this guy, this poor guy. He took it the first time and he didn't pass. And then he went back and he did pass the second time and said, uh, you know, he, he didn't study a lot of the right things. So what I did is I, I write, wrote down those codes that I showed you and um, was trying to analyze them a little bit. Um, they're just given these here, and I must have gotten one of each of these types wrong, except one of the categories was too wrong. And um, so, for instance, this one, uh, the applicability of Part 107. How did I get that wrong? It's like the most basic thing. It's, you know, Section 1, Part A. And I think it was a question about um, registration ability of someone who had a foreign-based registered drone. Are they also allowed to fly? And I... I chalked it up to a guess. Um, and by, by the end of the test, I went through, I used my scratch paper, and I tallied all the ones that I thought I had right. And I think I was just at that 42 mark for a pass. And then I was hoping that all these others that I was kind of like, yeah, meh, that's kind of a guess, 50-50. Um, and if I get enough of those right, and I guess that I did. But uh, the thing that was killing me is, where, where do I find the answers to these questions? Uh, I went online, I followed the link that they gave me, and found um, this document, which is where I got these headings from. And, uh, you know, originally I had studied from the guide from, you know, 2018. So finally, here's the up-to-date one. It's got the nighttime stuff, it's got the flying over people, uh, the remote ID, all of that kind of stuff. I was like, great, this was the document that I needed all along. But really, it just lists what these categories are. That's where I found all of the headings that I'm using here, my missed questions. That's where these, this information is coming from. But there's nothing to study here. So I know that I've got to tunnel down. And so I just descended into this world of FAA site madness of trying to find the right thing. Where should I have found this? You know, learn the rules. So I go ahead and I click on that. And it takes me to that uh, ECFR site. And here it is. Here it is, part 107. I should be able to read this and figure out everything. Here's the applicability. But then as I read through this, you know, it's referring to other things. And I'm not really sure. Like, I still don't know the answer to that question about whether it's registered in the U.S. or not. Um, I did notice that they have a new site here. 
And so I went over there and it looks like this. And you can t tunnel all the way down. Title 14, which is uh, aeronautics in space. And then chapter one is the registry, you know, and then here's F and then here's 107. And so you can go through and read all the text and it's really just the same information. So to find some things, I do recommend that you look over all this and maybe glean out, try to pull out the important keywords and information and make your own notes. If I failed and I have to, had to take it again, that's what I would be doing. I'd be going through and reading the code very clearly. But I do have to say, uh, the, the standard videos online will get you part of the way there. They are a very good backbone. But I'd say they're probably only enough to get you up to the passing point, to get you up to the 60s or 70%. And from there, I mean, I know the FAA wants us to have kind of a feel for this, not just memorize a bunch of answers, but kind of get an intuition about how to answer these. But some of the questions they asked, um, I just, I didn't recognize them. They weren't in the standard online videos, the popular ones. And so maybe you need to take a course that you pay for. Um, maybe that's, that's worth paying for at this point. Uh, the test has changed. And so if you can find a company that is up to date, a test prep company, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to pay the extra money. I felt like I was a good test taker. I'm a teacher myself. I felt like I knew what they were looking for. And I did ultimately pass. So you can do it too. Just go in knowing that it's going to be trickier than you thought. Um, one uh, additional piece of information is, you know, you take all these online tests and you can zoom in on these maps and it's a PDF and uh, it's very easy to see. And with this, you're flipping through a book and you have to get really good. You're not looking at page numbers. You're looking at figure 25, area three. And so honing in on that uh, will, will help you speed up pretty quickly. So um, you can do it. You can pass. Um, it is definitely doable. I just, I feel like the information that is highly needed from the FAA is not directly available. Reading through the part 107 itself doesn't get you a lot of the way. There are not uh, example test questions that really nail the, the more up-to-date test. So if you're taking this, obviously you are taking this after summer of 2021 with the new rules in place. The test has changed, and I wanted to warn you about that, and just, just be ready as you go in. So good luck. You can do it, and uh, I'll see you out there. Fly safely. Have a good one.